whether that's healthy or not, that's just how I am as a person. Ooh, whether that's healthy or not, that's just how I am as a person. Whether it's healthy or not, that's just how I am as a person. And this is why I say the world knows who it is. Zeta knows who she is. She's saying it out loud. She's telling you who she is. She's not healthy. She has a lot to work on, but she is right now not interested in being someone different. I wasn't somebody that had everything figured out in my 20s. I was somebody that struggled. And so when I was in my 20s and I worked really hard on realizing what I wanted, did I want poly? Did I want monogamy? Did I want uh, religious, secular? Did I want queer, straight? Did I, what did I want? I had to really ask like who I was. And to be honest, I had to date pretty messily and I had to have pretty toxic relationships for me to grow out of these stages. But I remember thinking something that I see reflected sort of in Xena and like, again, major props to her for coming out and talking about her relationships. But it's this idea of this is what I can get. And I think I had this mindset of this is what I was going to get and this was pretty good and somebody finally saw a part of me that no one had seen before but it wasn't really a healthy relationship. It was more of a settling into what was available and what I could have at the moment because of who I was. If you're dating toxic, you probably have toxicity within you. If your relationship is dysfunctional, you probably have to look at yourself. It's very easy to blame our partners and to say like, well, my partner is the dysfunctional one and that's why I'm in a toxic relationship. But the truth is, is that I think in order to stay in that relationship, a part of you has to be dysfunctional. And so I would argue that of course I had dysfunction within me. Of course I was in that relationship and in those relationships because I allow dysfunction to stay around me. And so I want to watch these clips with you from this panel from Not So Erudite's channel. Again, I love Kyla. I love her work. Um, but again, there's no one on this panel with a voice like mine that has gone from toxic to healthy and that did open and sees open as healthy and then is monogamous and does that healthily. But also like I'm married I found my person. I did not settle. I waited my 30s to make sure that I was going to choose somebody that was the right person and not just settle into a relationship that was conveniently available. So again, I want to give you exactly what you want from a relationship. But in order to do that, you first have to realize that you have so much power in your life. You have so much power in your life. And so until you realize that, I think you will always settle for something that is less than. Until you realize how much power you have, you might always settle into something that is less than. So let's watch these three clips together. I've got um, put together and then I've got a little bit of a doc Dr. Kirkonda clip I want to show you too. Because Dr. Kirkonda, if you guys watch his work on uh, YouTube, he's very self-aware about healthy polyamorous and open relationships. He's very self-aware about sex positivity. He's very self-aware about sex workers. He's very self, like, he's so educated in terms of alternative bubbles, even though he isn't in an alternative bubble, he's monogamous. He's, he's not, you know, all of these things. He is somebody who's so aware of it and knows the difference between healthy poly and toxic poly. Just because you're poly doesn't mean you're healthy. So many people in poly and open relationships think like I'm better than the monogamous people because I'm open and modern, but like you're just as toxic as your baby boomer parents. And so there's something to be said there. Just for clarification, I see a comment that says, would an erudite be an example of healthy? Uh, healthy monogamous and religious couple. So different. So yes, obviously Kyla's relationship with Nick is great and I'm not criticizing that relationship, but I think it's hard for somebody in that bubble to explain to somebody in Zena's bubble uh, her options, right? Because Zena, like no offense, if I was Zena, I wouldn't care so much what a religious monogamous person has to say about their relationship. I would want to know from somebody who's doing what I'm doing. And the fact that she references like destiny as like an example of a relationship that works that's open. I don't know if I would argue that that's working because you shouldn't be having like fights with your partners. You shouldn't be cheating on them. You shouldn't be lying to them or deceiving them. So again, you can do those things. You're allowed to have exactly the relationship you want, including a toxic one. You're allowed to continue dating a person or being with a person who like cheats on you or disrespects you or lies to you or breaks your trust. You're allowed to make it work. You're allowed to go to couples counseling. You're allowed to do whatever you want. But I personally feel like you shouldn't, if you're going to reference like healthy polyamorous or open couples, you should probably actually reference people who are poly and not people who are just open. And then you should probably know the differences between these words. Like the amount of that this bubble on YouTube interchangeably uses these words does give me a lot of anxiety because like, it's like you're, um, 
culturally appropriating a totally alternative community that has these words and they mean something like there's books written on this there's conferences done on this there's studies that are done on alternative relationships but then these people from the internet just it's like they heard it one time and they're like yeah that's what i am and i'm like oh okay like but it means something and it doesn't have to mean the same thing in your bubble but then you're the alternative you're the weird one because you're not using it like the rest of the poly people if you meet an actually poly person who's done poly traditionally that means they're usually in many loves multiple loving relationships that have some level of dedication to them and it means something it's different from swingers and it's different from open and it's different from i'm single but i have a situationship situationships are not polyamory monogamy is not polyamory open relationships aren't polyamory you can be open and poly you can be polyamory and do situationships but you see how these are all different and again i am super obsessed with categorization so this is my i get excited that there's so many ways to identify but it could be overwhelming but it also helps you find people who are like you you know what i mean so again you have to realize that you can have what you want in life. You just got to meet people that are identifying words similarly to you. So let's watch these clips before I get totally into it and start rambling. And then we'll, um, we'll start this. Okay, ready? So here we go. So this is, let me switch the screens here for you guys. Okay, so you are seeing uh, Erudite stream and the sound should be good. It's probably going to be really loud because there's a lot of people on the panel. And I just want to start here at this at this time stamp. This is 37 minutes in and this is from, um, let me just, I'll tag the video in the chat so you guys can see it. I'm just, yeah, I just want to differ. Her volume is like low. I, She's I, fixing I, it. I don't know. It's the same thing, bro. I just, I know what I want exclusively for me. True. The sex part, he can have set, he knows how to have set true maybe without having her volume is super super low so just keep that in mind emotional attachment debatable but what i'm considering is emotional and intimate is the things that he thinks is normal and that so right now what's happening just to give you guys a little bit of a catch me up Zena is having problems with Darius if you guys know who Darius is he's a little bit of a drama king on YouTube he's a unique little snowflake he's friends with Irrelevant and I love Relly so like major you know interesting dynamics there because I like I Darius makes me uneasy if I'm being honest with you he's just a little too dysfunctional for me a little too toxic um boy for me but the thing that's interesting is like Zena is telling Darius I would like romantic exclusivity with you. I don't care if you have sex with other women. I would like you to be only romantic with me. But Darius wants an open relationship where he's affectionate with his girlfriends or even a platonic affection with his female friends. He wants to cuddle them and make them mixtapes and do nice affectionate things with them, which again, if you're in Seattle, pretty normal to like hang out with your friends and maybe cuddle with them, maybe even shower with them. I have platonic friends that I've never kissed, that I've never like sexually been involved with, that I've taken showers with, that I've had threesomes with where we didn't do anything together, which I think is very platonic in my mind. Um, but we've like focused on their partners or I've done BDSM with people that have like never touched my genitalia. So for me, of course, I think this is possible to have platonic opposite sex, sex for friends that you're sort of like flirty romantic with without it being dating or sexual but obviously you have to be trained in that and you have to be healthy about it and it's very hard to be healthy because often it's a miscommunication and people are confused like Zena expressing distraught um being distraught over her relationship with Darius is proving that something is unhealthy right they're not healthy happy kind there's something missing in the way that they're communicating there's something missing that she's complaining about that he is frustrated with and so again she is saying that I Ideally, I would like a partner who I don't care if he sleeps with other women, only you'll hear her say it. The caveat is that she would like monogamy, but she thinks that all men are going to cheat and need to have like physical satisfaction with other women because like she's works for fresh and fit. She knows what it's like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, the amount of bubbles. Like it's so insane the way these people limit themselves. Okay, let's keep going. But like basically listen to listen to the self fulfilling sabotage cycle like it's a beautiful thing and I want more for Zina I want more for everybody I want you to know you can have exactly the life you want but you have to know that you're settling to even think you can have it right that's where I'm having a hard time finding that compromise in middle ground is the playlist so and that stuff like that's your heart yeah your hard line is like playlist making and any sort of like basically romantic overtures do you have an issue with him like doing group like public flirting or anything? Like I think I've seen videos of him like flirting with people in group settings. Is that okay with you? 
Like, what do you mean? Like, uh, if he's like, yeah, if he's like in a group like, setting, but he looks putting his head. I wanted him to go on the eat and rizz up bitch. Like, I literally am actively setting. Okay. So a few things. Again, everyone has different language everywhere, but I will say Zena's misogynistic language, and she identifies herself as a misogynist, right? She always says, like, you don't have to convince me. I'm a misogynist. I'm a red pill. But, like, she is very misogynistic in her language, which, like, I understand, girl. I feel you. You know, it's a little pick me, but I get it. Where you're trying to say, like, these bitches, these hoes, like, riz up a bitch. Like, find a bad bitch to riz up. Like, her language is so interesting to me because, again, in a healthy setting, we don't need to demoralize other people to humanize ourselves. In a healthy setting, I don't need to call a woman a derogatory term to, like, uplift myself in my relationship with my man. And you'll see that at the very end of the stream, the way she, like, threatens other women if they, quote, unquote, go for her man. This language, this possessiveness is completely toxic there's just like no healthy relationship in which it is reasonable and rational and a completely um confident person a person who's completely good with themselves to feel the sense of unnecessary ill will towards another person right you can feel it you can feel disdain for their lack of values but again that's your values onto them you can feel like a little bit jealous jealousy is normal you know you can work around those feelings of jealousy but even her language is just so dysfunctional in and of itself, which again, everyone speaks differently. You can use the word bitch towards a woman and not mean it derogatorily, but the, the it's a very fine line. You have to know how to do it, right? It's a very fine line and I don't see Xena expressing that. And again, she does self-identify as like a misogynist, right? So like I'm not, I'm not hating on her. I'm just like clarifying what bubble she's coming from up an eat date with people like even the island boys and stuff and he's one of the dudes too so obviously he's gonna have to riz up some bad bitches like that's different that's content whatever now mm, sorry one last thing also the thing that her and darius do which is interesting much like uh lena and adam 22 is that they make content together and they're in a relationship. So the issue is Xena and Darius make content. Sometimes they even like get clickbaity together. They'll like fake argue together for views. So it's not always clear what is sensational for the views, which they're fully open they're doing, or what is um what is uh like actually happening within the context of the relationship. So even this conversation is hard, but I I think it's possible. So I personally agree with Xena that you can have a separation between like romantic, platonic, sexual, like I think you can have as much caveats in your relationship as you need. It just depends on how you understand language. Because if you read the polyamory books, if you read the open books, if you read the BDSM books, if you read these books, they'll tell you how to make this happen in your relationships. But if you're just guessing and learning along the way, girl, why are you trying to invent the wheel? These communities have been around for decades and they've already done it for you. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can take their models and then switch it to work for you, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. And I feel like everybody on this panel is like always trying to reinvent the wheel. Like read more than two, read the books on polyamory, read The Ethical Slut, like read books that have already come, like people have come before you, written down multiple ways to do these things in a better way, like a healthy way. So you don't have to trial and error through your 20s and 30s. Just letting you know. You know what I'm saying? That's that's different. So I guess I think that like issue that's happening when I hear it is the lines you're like you're creating this situation where you're encouraging him to do a bunch of behavior that's like riddled with landmines and it's like pretty clear that his like past behavior is something that you're not comfortable with in the relationship which is fine yeah. and he's willing to negotiate as far as like taming those behaviors down but the issue is like if you're setting up e-dates for him but he's not allowed to flirt or do romantic overtures but that's like a really standard thing that he's used well, to doing with most rizzing i think that's like, i i get it content that, so i get it that, the issue that I'm saying is it feels like you're asking for like a 180 flip in behavior and like that's not realistic and then kind of like sending him down a pathway that is like most likely to upset you. Okay. So though I can understand where Kyla's coming from here, I would say like this. I would say, okay, so Xena wants a very structured relationship, which I'm all about. I love a structured relationship, girl. Same. And Kyla is saying it's going to make him do a 180, which is unrealistic. I don't think it's unrealistic. I think it lacks boundaries and that's why it's unrealistic and it's confusing because Zena's is not quite sure what she wants because she's willing to caveat on her values because Zena is saying I want monogamy but I don't think men can be monogamous so I'm willing to settle for a situation where he sleeps with other women 
And Darius is saying, I'll be monogamous with you. I won't sleep with other women, but I need to be romantic or cuddle or affectionate with my girlfriends. There's like so many layers of bubbles involved here that you guys don't even realize it. There are relationships. Again, I've ha- I have friends like this where we cuddle, sometimes we kiss. Not now. I'm monogamy, monogamous, monogamous. So like I don't do this with my friends anymore. But in the past, I would hug and kiss my friends. Um, I would have sex with my friends. I would not have sex with some of my friends that I would cuddle with. Some people, men, women, non-binary. Like I've had, I just have the exact relationship I negotiate with that exact person. It's not black and white. It's literally so the opposite of black and white. Every single person I have the relationship with, I negotiate specifically with them. So even in my new, like my marriage right now, this marriage, I have had to negotiate like, okay, OnlyFans opportunities, um, random nude events, uh, hugging, kissing other people. <clears throat> Because I've lived 30 plus years doing my own thing. Of course, I needed to have a new relationship negotiation with the consciousness that is my partner. So every relationship you have needs to be modeled between the two people in it. Let's say two for this sake because Polly makes it difficult with four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's say with the two people modeled here, Zena and Darius. Darius, Darius. So like the both of them, they need to come together and say, do we actually want the same things? And it's not going to work if Zena already is saying, ideally, I'd want monogamy but I'm going to settle for this. Don't settle. That's why it will never be healthy. Because the moment you settle, you're saying I'm losing a part of myself that I'd prefer to have that I might even need, but I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to fight for it because it's impossible. The fact that Zena thinks all men, generally men can't be monogamous when the rest of the world is mostly monogamous. Actually, this poly girl, there's a poly girl on this panel, the one with glasses. I don't know who she is, but she said it. She goes, I'm the outlier. I'm the weird one who has an open relationship. Most of the world is monogamous. Yeah, most of the world is not thinking about having multiple partners. It's not thinking about that. Like most of the world is not thinking, oh, men are going to cheat on me. They're just thinking bad men will cheat on me. Do you guys understand that like normal people, if you cheat on your partner, you're a bad person. In average society, cheating is the bad thing. It's not normal to think, oh, men will cheat. It is normal to think men will look. It is normal to think men might look at porn. It is normal to think men might notice a woman who's walking next to him. But it is not normal to assume your husband will cheat on you. That is dysfunctional. We have allowed dysfunctional people like Fresh and Fit to gain this narrative on the internet. And Xena works for them, so I get it. To convince women and men that it is nature, natural for women, or I'm sorry, for men to cheat on their wives. That is not natural. It's not, what is natural? Everything a human does is quote unquote natural, but like it's not common. Most people aren't getting into relationships thinking, oh yes, well, my husband will cheat on me. It's like, no. Why would we think that? Unless we're all, you know, reaching for dysfunction. If you're reaching for dysfunction, then yes, your man will cheat on you. But if you're not reaching for dis- dysfunction and you're going for something more healthy, then obviously the healthy thing to do is not cheat on your partner. Cheating on your partner is always unhealthy because the cheating couldn't have occurred without a lack of breaking a, a trust, right? I'm going to pause right now for this super chat from Truth Marie. Thank you so much. 999. Girl, that's a big super chat. Thank you. I uh, says, oh my God, hold on. How about a sneeze? Okay, we breathe. Whew. Okay. Oh my God, I just got this worst sneeze attack. Okay. Oh, am I going to make it? Okay, I muted myself so I didn't hurt the earphone users. Woo! Okay, so, um, sorry, Tooth Marie says, I just, uh, oh, I just got broken up today uh, by my girlfriend. I'm 25 and she was 23. This was my first ever relationship. Any tips with moving forward? First of all, I'm very sorry. As you know, breakups are 100% about your growth and their growth. And this is a part of your story. So like get ready to like live in this moment. You're in a very interesting moment and you're going to gain a lot of tools right now. But ultimately, like take your time, mourn the relationship, allow yourself to feel sad over it. I mean, 25 and 23, that's like you're probably going to remember this relationship, right? This is probably going to be one of those really significant relationships for you. This is normal. You're having a very normal part of your 20s, falling in love and having a breakup, right? So definitely embrace the feelings of mourning. Allow this person to move on. Allow you to eventually move on. But, you know, take your time. No rush. 
And eventually, when it's the right time, you'll mourn the appropriate amount of time and you'll move on. I don't think there's a time limit for what's appropriate. I think what's more important is that you've allowed yourself to acknowledge that this was important and now we're going to do something different. Oh, we were together for six months. Okay, so good news is that what a wonderful six months. And when it's time, you'll move on. I didn't see um, anyone as a teen or a young adult. I was homeschooled. Same. I only did two years of public school. Otherwise, I was homeschooled. Interesting. Yeah, you got this, girly. Give yourself time. Give yourself. Are you a boy or a girl, actually? Marie, I'm going to assume you're a girl. Um, But, you know, give yourself time. Write it down in a journal. Talk about it with like someone who's close to you and and realize like this is an this is like a good hardcore memory for you to have for the rest of your life of like, oh yeah, that person I dated. How interesting. You know what I mean? Um, Rock Paper Plato says the gaslighting that has convinced certain bubbles that all men will cheat and that it's just a fact of nature is pretty woke. Like literally, I am shook at how many people keep just allowing this narrative to move on like it's normal. It's not normal. And what is normal? That's cultural. This week's podcast is going to be so good. I have a guest and we talk about normal versus weird. And I think um, it's about being appropriate. We like had this really great conversation, but basically, you know, what's appropriate? It is not appropriate to cheat on your partner. That's super inappropriate. You're being inappropriate, right? And so again, we have to have a conversation about what's appropriate. I think it's sort of inappropriate to assume your partner will cheat on you. It means there's something wrong. That's a red flag, right? Oh, Truth Maria says, um, this was my first ever relationship. She was supposed to meet my siblings next week. Damn. Did she realize she was going to meet the family and then realized it was probably better to break up? That's fair. To be honest, rejection is a part of consent. And the good part about being broken up with is that she's basically giving you an opportunity to fall in love with the right person. We should date to break up. We should date to find our person. And so that means until you find the right person, you will always end up breaking up as you should. So the good news is that this wasn't your person, but it's definitely was going to give you a tool on like what it means to care for someone. And that's really beautiful, right? No relationship is a failure. If you've grown and experienced something you've gained from that relationship, absolutely. There's always a tool to be gained from everything. And everything is a moment in time, right? My marriage will last for as long as it lasts. Hopefully the length of my life but you know what I mean like it's that's a full moment the length of my life is a moment like our my marriage won't last past my death because I'll be dead so it's one of those things where everything ends you know it's just a matter of when you know what I mean what is blocking me from getting back searching for a new relationship is that I feel it will be ending is it immature for me to uh hold on this heart emoji is blocking chat so I can't see it so I have to wait for your chat to like move up a little bit is it blocking me from thinking relationships are temporary I'm gonna assume that's what you said um everything is temporary and the only thing that's permanent is your commitment to the relationship is it immature me of is it immature of me not thinking relationships are temporary wait so you do think they're temporary or you don't think they're temporary Because the thing is, is like everything is temporary. It's just like, again, everything is just a moment, but the moment can last a lifetime or it could last shorter, right? I hate the heart emoji too. I like it, but I want it to move. YouTube needs to get on this. It's very inconveniently placed. It's like the worst place it could be. There's so many other places it could have gone. There's so many other places they could have put it. I love it, but I really wish they would move it. It's so inconvenient. It's like the worst YouTube. Anyways, let's keep going with this video. Um, because like there's just so many landmines. I'm not saying what you're saying is impossible. I'm just saying like the the gap between like what you're looking for and where he's at is pretty big. So sending him on e-dates as well as like kind of a recipe for disaster. He's probably going to f*** up. Like, if I- okay, so again, the problem is, is like when your relationship is also content, like one of the reasons why my partner and I aren't online together is because like I don't want my relationship to be content as much as I talk about my relationship and maybe in the future that will change but the problem is like where you are on the internet right and what kind of an audience will talk about it like when Jordan Peterson and Tammy talk about their marriage their audience is looking at them like a very successful marriage they're very excited but if my relationship was being 
ostracized by this panel. It would just be a bunch of dysfunctional people, Kyla excluded, who's looking at my relationship. And again, I don't know the, the girl with glasses, so I don't know anything about her. And I don't know the girl with the nice pink shirt. I don't know anything about her. But like if if people who are dysfunctional are viewing your relationship, well, they're never really going to understand it. And I don't I don't need that part of the internet to have opinions about something because they won't even know. But if you get people who are already in good relationships and they're healthy, they'll be able to have really good relationship conversations with you and your partner. So I think one of the dilemmas is that this is content because it's dysfunctional. You know what I mean? Healthy relationships, if you're watching like couples that are successful, they're not getting, in my opinion, the kinds of views or the kinds of like clickbaity titles that like, look at Kyla t- title as destiny triggers a relationship feud. Darius is going to be a father. Like, I get it. We're in like clickbaity part of YouTube where, you know, we're being critical of people's relationships, but the ones that are dysfunctional are the ones we can be critical of. You know what I mean? It's, it's harder to make content about healthy relationships. So like my relationship doesn't have a place in this sphere because it's, it's doing its thing, right? So again, remember that we're in a sphere where people are dysfunctional. So Darius and um, Zena trying to put down like boundaries around the relationship and work is it's so hard. And so that's really the issue, especially if they're not on the same page in terms of the relationship. Now, Zena says, and I don't know if she says in these clips because I watched this whole thing, but basically that her and Darius did agree on what they wanted. They just don't know how to make it happen. Monogamy can look different for everyone. You could be monogamish or monogamous. You can have a monogamous relationship where you do finances together. You tell each other everything or you can do monogamy in a way where you're like, I never look at your bank account. Every relationship is different. You can't just say I'm poly and I'm open or I'm monogamous and have people go, I know exactly what that means. No, we all come from different backgrounds and cultures. You have got to negotiate specifics. And that takes a long time. I think I heard Zena say she thinks Darius might be her one and only like forever. No, I'm going to call it right now. And I mean this in the nicest way possible. This is not your one and forever. You are better than this. You are worth more than this. Even Darius, he has so much growing to do. He could be better than this. But right now, like this is not healthy. This is dysfunctional. And if you settle for this dysfunction, what are you settling for? It's not for the consciousness that is that person because you're hoping that they change. If Darius was perfect the way he was right now, she would be fine. But if there's character flaws in her mind that he has that she would want him to change, then she's not in love with the person he is. She's in love with the person she he want, she wants him to be. But keep watching because there's a reason why she's fallen for Darius. And I think it's very important when you're healing from trauma not to fall for the small, nice things people do for you and assume that, ooh, because I've never had someone be this nice to me, this must be my person. Being honest. We I hope he doesn't. With, but. but if it's something that we're agreeing with, like if he was like, if we're talking about it and we agree to do it, then that's that's like not the same because we know it's for content. We know what e-dates are. Nobody's serious on fucking e-dates. Now, the issue, would there be an issue if, okay, we did the e-date, right? He frizzed up some bitches, cool. But now he's making them blended Spotify's and sending them flowers to their house. That would be an issue, yes. Yep. I'm not expecting him to do some shit like that, but that's what I'm trying to like. True. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, that's super fair. It's just, I suspect in the future, there's almost like an infinite landscape of romantic overtures. So like right now it's like playlists and stuff. So say he stopped doing that perfectly. I suspect there will be other behaviors along the way where you're like, well, that feels like, because romantic overture is kind of vague and ambiguous of like what that even means. So say he mm-hmm. fully stops everything that you've listed as part of the problem. There's a pretty good chance if this is somewhat his personality in like his dynamic with women that he's flirty and romantic with, that there will be other things that you just haven't thought of or listed that will also make you uncomfortable. That's kind of what I mean as far as like landmines. It's like there's a whole nebulous, you guys have only been yeah, together two weeks. There's a lot of unknown. On. It's been longer than that. But there's something that I've been working on too is like like the blowout factor or like freaking out now like and going like obviously we're having a conversation here i'm just pointing out things we're talking it's regular versus like Fuck you oh my god i'm not like i i got into the situation when i was telling him i'm not doing this no more lose my number this that and the third and that's what i'm trying to not do anymore and stop that type of behavior that is just talk mm, okay i also want to say something that's really small but it stands out to me you know when she said like oh i'm over it like lose my number I'm just going to give you guys this tool. You don't have to use it in your practice, but I recommend you do not say lose my number. You block them. Because when you say lose my number, you know what you're trying to convey. You're trying to say like it's over. But what you're really saying is it's on you to lose my number. 
if you've made the decision to act, like to put a boundary down and someone's not allowed in your life, you have to be the one to block them. You can't actually allow them to make the choice on whether or not they're going to lose your number. You know what I mean? And that's something that I see also in these toxic kind of situations, the getting back together, breaking up, getting back together. There's something really important about like, it doesn't matter if you have my number or not, I'm blocking yours. That's very different than lose my number. It's small, but I think it makes a difference. Toxic, And instead, if I have an issue with something, wait, think about it for a few hours and then come and have a conversation like, hey, this is right. What's going on. I guess. Sometimes the way I'm looking at your guys' dynamic, because I think a lot of the boundaries you're asking for are fair enough. I just think like the added, like I'm open to open relationships, but kind of, but not really. And I don't prefer mm -hmm. it, but I am yeah. open to it. I think that yeah. specifically, like the way that I read that is like, it feels like this dynamic where like, there's almost like this desire to be like pursued and picked over other women. Mm. But it's a, like, I don't know why we have to like manufacture like artificial competition for you, I guess. Mm. Okay, I want to say this too. When I was in dysfunction, like versus now where I'm in healthy, when I was in dysfunction, there was a sense of victory when someone picked you over the other girl. Because in some ways you are being picked, which is why I think there's a lot of dysfunction in the relationship world online that relates to I got picked, I'm the one who won. Ooh, he ended up with X. Oh, she ended up with X. Like, ooh, like you got a hot girl. Oh, she's rich. Oh, you got the rich guy, like the rich, the hot girl. Like there's something about like I won or I won the breakup, the super dysfunctional. Like after a breakup, you pay attention to where your ex ends up and like whether or not they ended up with someone better than you. It's like, oh, I definitely won the, the breakup. All these are toxic. I think all of this comes from dysfunction. All of this comes from such a weak sense of character. And I've been there. I have I have been in situations where I thought to myself, like, oh, my gosh, I got picked. And I'm like, ew. But looking back, what else could I have been except dysfunctional and toxic when I was living that life? But in your head, you think you're better than everyone else because you're self-aware about it. You're like, yeah, but I know I'm in one, so I'm better off. That's the trap that I think a lot of people fall into is like you can be self-aware and talk about your dysfunction online like that's happening on this panel right now, but you're not self-aware enough to get out of it. And that's the point I want to get you guys to if you want to go there. It's one thing like you can acknowledge your dysfunction and justify it because it's quote unquote working because you're aware of it. But I hope that's not your freaking end goal, bros. I hope that is not your end goal to stay in your dysfunction. But it is for a lot of people in this space, you know, for a lot of people I see in relationships, they're like, well, this is the only way it can be. And if I have to be with this person, but it has to be this way, that is worth it. Again, you can have exactly the relationship you want. If you want a relationship exactly as dysfunctional as you want it, you can have it. I don't recommend it, but like you can have it. And I need you to know that you are choosing it. Now, one thing I want to say is that relationships are things you want. We're not guaranteed and we're n like to meet the perfect person for us. We're not guaranteed to run into those millions of people that are really, really great for us and healthy for us. And so a relationship is something that you want. I don't think it's something that you need. If you convince me that falling in love and having a partner is just as vital as eating and drinking water, like I'd like to see your documentation for that because like I don't believe you. When I say a want, I mean a romantic relationship is something we want and it should be in order for it to be healthy. I'm lucky if I meet my person. I'm grateful that I meet my person, but also I'm not going to settle into dysfunction. So if finding my person or dysfunction are my two options, better to be single because I need to be healthy. For me, I need to stay healthy and that's all I care about. And if it's not healthy, I'm not doing it no matter how big the temptation. But in my 20s, oh my God, I was tempted into dysfunction. There is a temptation to play with fire. There is a temptation to see a burning like a bridge or a burning building and be like, I got to watch that. I got to be involved in that. You know what I mean? And it's when you choose not to be that I think you've really grown and healed is every time you're tempted to go back into that to save people, to get swallowed by other people's dysfunction, there's something, there's a line there. There's like a moment in your life where you're like, oh, I'm not going to go back there. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out of this bubble of toxicity, right? So again, if Zena and Darius want to be in a healthy relationship, they should probably talk to couples who exhibit healthy traits in their relationships. And like those are very specific kinds of couples. I mean, couples who who have like um, 
how do I say this? Like healthy is a spectrum and everyone has a different version of it, but they should find people who model the relationships they want and find those people who are doing it. So that's probably a better way to do it as well. Cause like, again, Kyla and Nick might have a healthy relationship, but like, I don't know anything. I don't know how their relationship applies to Zena's relationship with Darius. So I'm trying to think of like, who's an open relationship person on the internet who like does it really well. But the dilemma is that these people might be too young or too in the drama to understand it. I think Zena's 27 and I think Darius is 28, 29. I think they're just about the same age. There's a lot of dysfunction still here that they might need time growing out of. I felt like I grew out of my dysfunction towards my 30s. Personally, I feel like when I turned 30, I made the decision to like never go back again. And that's when I made the decision. I was 30 years old. Four years ago, I made the decision not to go back into dysfunction. And it's hard because all your old friends are in that dysfunction bubble. Uh, your exes are in that dysfunction bubble. Hell, maybe your job is in that dysfunction bubble. So it's like really difficult not to want to go back, but you you can't engage. One of the reasons I'm really careful about how I engage online is because I know how tempting it is to go back into the dysfunction bubble. Like I wouldn't be a good person to be on a panel like this because again, I don't want anyone to think like dysfunction is our goal. But right now it feels like a lot of these spaces, it's like um, how do I maintain my relationship in the dysfunction so I'm not drowning, but I'm also not healing? That's what it feels like to me. It feels like, how can I stay in this so it is still dysfunctional, but I'm not every day like drowning in the dysfunction. I'm just floating in it. And I'm saying, well, what if you just weren't in the dysfunction at all? And that is a lot, right? That's a lot to ask of people because not everyone wants to heal. Not everybody wants to do that. And I think most people are good staying where they are. You know? Um... Ooh, Discord says sometimes it's really, it really is like that in many aspects of life. You don't understand the magnitude or significance until you get that close and need to opt out. Thing is, is it a surprise or were you blindsided because you didn't have enough introspection on the decision that you were surprised? I think so much about being honest with ourselves is realizing how much we already know, but we're in denial of how much we know, right? Like one of the reasons I know for a fact that like when people hear me talk about them, and they're like, why would she say that? It's because I'm I'm listening to you when you talk. So if you say like, oh, yeah, I'm really messy. I, I tend to get into drama a lot. Um, oh, yeah, I've cheated on my partner. Like dysfunctional, toxic. And then when people are like, why would she say I'm dysfunctional or toxic? Well, I didn't say it. You said it. I didn't say it. You said it. I agreed. When Darius and Zena look at their relationship, they are saying out loud, I'm dysfunctional. We are toxic, but then they might maybe, I don't know, get defensive and people are like, hey, it's like they already know. So why can't people get better? If they already know what's going on, why aren't they switching things up? Because they're holding on to the idea that they can make this consciousness change. Zena is asking Darius to change and Darius is asking Zena to change. We're ready off to a really bad start. Don't let her take and I don't know away, if that's Zena. She's being, do. she's coming down on you way too hard. Go in. What do you mean? <laughs> in a weird way, in a weird way, Zena, you kind of say like, it just will depend on how I feel. Like how I feel about his interaction with the other woman, how I feel about his sexual interaction with the other woman. And that just, I don't think it's a healthy thing. <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? I don't. No, Be I, because, I don't. True. <laughs> because, Fuck up, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like um because you're very dubious about it you're like oh i'm actually just want a monogamous relationship but i'm okay with him sleeping i feel like you are putting yourself in a situation where you will be actually changing your opinion just based on the situation sometimes you might feel okay sometimes you might not feel okay and it's going to be very inconsistent okay so ground here is i'll never be with the rate of how much like i like this person and i'm getting to know this person and like finding things that we have in common and just different stuff like obviously i like more than typically obviously i'm never going to be okay inside with him even sleeping around that's not something like i'm gonna be okay with but i can accept it not blow up and fucking treat him like shit for it and fucking attack him why would I'm you want to be in a relationship with him in the first place if you're not going to be okay with it on the inside? You guys are ruining Darius. Like how would you want to live your life like that? Unreal. 
So then, okay, if a guy in most cases is more than likely going to sleep around, if he does it behind my back and I find out, I think that would be worse than if we come to an agreement. So, I'll, like, I'm accepting, like, and he's accepting bound. I love this. Zena is making a very reasonable conclusion to the amount of information she has in front of her. So Zena is this person who grew up with like this amount of information. This is all she sees. And she goes, okay, well, if men are going to cheat on me, at least I want to be aware of it. So I know I'm not going to freak out. She is literally admitting she's problem solving so well right now. She just has limited information, but this is good problem solving. And then my job is to come in and be like, actually, you can know this. And how about this and this and this and this. And then I want to do this until you can't say anymore. Well, this is just how the world works. There are a few few exceptions of this is how the world works, right? When it comes to individual relationships, it's not about how the world works. It's about how you and the person you're involved with work. Zena is doing such a good job at problem solving. She just has limited information. I can't even blame her for coming to this conclusion. And I'm just, I want to be a voice on the internet that reminds people like you don't have to do this. You don't have to settle. You do not have to do this. You do not have to convince yourself that this is the only way the world works. You get to fall in love with a very special person who looks at you and treats you just as special as you are. And as long as you're working on yourself and you're trying to be a good person and you're trying to do right by your values, you can find people that will treat you with dignity. Now, you don't always get that opportunity, which is why, again, the relationship has to be a want, not a need. A romantic relationship cannot be the same as needing water and food. Because you need those things to live. You do not need a romantic relationship to live. You you want a romantic relationship, which is fair. Me too, girl. That's why I got married, right? But I waited. 33 years, I waited, right? So all these girls that are 27 and 31, like, slow down. Okay, hold on. Wait. Pay attention. You don't need to settle into a relationship where you think, well, yeah, ideally I'd like him to be X, but I guess I'll settle for Y. What is a, what, why are you so desperate? just to be next to somebody. Get a cat. Get a dog. Like you do not need to do this. You do not need this stress because look what happens. When you try to settle, look what happens. You have no peace. When you try to settle, you have this or a variation of this. A midlife crisis at 45 where you're cheating with a 22-year-old, spending all your money, you know, not paying your mortgage. You have a crisis. Stop settling when you can actually just live your best life, whether it's single or in a partnership. And I, again, I want to, I want to be a voice that just reminds people you have more options. And I remember being this person, guys, when I looked at my life and I said like, well, is this my only option to be Catholic and marry a Catholic man? Is that my only option? And people were like, yep, that's your only option. And then I met people who weren't Catholic and were married to women. And I was like, well, that doesn't seem to be my only option. And then I met people who were polyamorous. I'm like, well, monogamy doesn't seem to be my only option. Oh, and I found people who were like in nudist groups. And I was like, clothing doesn't seem to be my only option. If someone can make it work, you included, you can be that someone, then it can work. It's just got to be healthy. It's just got to be happy. It's just got to be kind. Right? So Zena, right? She's not very happy right now, though she has moments of it. They're not very, being very kind to one another because they're trying to force each other to change. And I see this comment here that says, is it inherently bad to ask someone to change? I think it's inherently tricky to want someone to change because the kind of change you're asking them to make can be specific. If I ask my partner, hey, now that we're married, we need to change our habits from single to married. That's different because obviously when I'm single, I have different habits than when I'm married. When I'm single, I can have sex with whoever I want. When I'm married, I have to change to only have sex with him and he only has sex with me because we're monogamous and we're together. So asking him to change in that regard isn't the same, but asking him to be someone he literally isn't is I think the mistake. Darius wants to be open and cuddle with his friends and show affectionate affection to his female friends. Zena wants him not to do that. That is asking Darius in some ways, yes, to now be in a relationship, But that's also asking him to be someone he's not because Darius is also allowed to date a woman who doesn't mind that he's affectionate with his female friends and actually likes it. Because again, I come from a world, well, I don't come from a world. I, I grew up and moved out of my parents' house and moved to a world where people flirt and cuddle and kiss their friends and have sex with their friends. And 
cuddle with their friends and don't have sex with them. Like I come from a world where you're allowed to be romantic with your friends and people don't think you're dating. I mean, some people think you are, but like you just like put your foot down. You know what I mean? So again, too many very variables here, but like Darius has the right to have a relationship where he's affectionate with his female friends. And Zena has the right to ask that he's not affectionate with his female friends. But is it right for her to ask Darius the consciousness? And is it right for Darius the consciousness to tell Zena the consciousness that he can do this? Again, if I'm an atheist and I'm dating a Catholic and I say, to date me, you can't be Catholic. I think that's pretty fucked up. Isn't that pretty effed up, bros? Like, that's kind of messed up, right? But if we're both atheists and I say, hey, um... Now that we're together, like, FYI, like, we have to make plans for how we're spending our money. That's just good business. That's like making a good plan as, like, a financial couple. The point is, is that I'm not telling you exactly what it means to be, what it means to work for you as long as it's healthy, though. And so, again, it's not inherently bad to ask someone to change. It's inherently tricky because often we ask people to cheat. I mean, sorry. Oh my God. I read the, I read the, I read, <laughs> I read the word cheat on my discord and then I said it out loud. Um. It's normal for us to ask our part. Wait, what was I going to say? Shoot. Oh, damn you, Discord. I don't know what I was going to say, but I will say this. It's normal for us to get into a relationship and change how we function day to day because now there's another person that we have to care for just as much as we care for ourselves. But I do think it's kind of messed up to lie to your partner about being able to be the kind of person they need and then vice versa, pretending, you know, you're, you don't want them to change, but you're hoping. Like one of the key things in this relationship that stands out to me for my marriage is that I actually found someone I didn't want to change and I wasn't living for his potential. I love exactly the person he is right now. And that's the first time every partner I've ever dated, male or female, I was like, oh, but one day we'll be like this, right? One day we'll be like this, right? One day we'll change, right? Now, to be fair, I was much younger in those relationships. Now that I'm in my 30s, I wouldn't think somebody would change in their 30s. I would just date them and say, oh, okay, this is like who you are for probably a long time. Cool. And then I would be like, yeah, no, I'm out. And then, or I'd be like, oh, I'm in. You know what I mean? Um, so do you guys get what I mean? Like, I, I don't know if people know you have so many more options. So let's keep going and see how Zena brainstorms the rest of this boundaries too like look i'm not gonna do this with them da, 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 just boom i would probably be happier with that than finding out oh he some chicken out and it was behind my back some sneaky mm -hmm. shit right and then you don't know what happened with that they could have been romantic they could have been having a whole side relationship but are you doing that because you like expect people to cheat on you or because you're okay yeah, with like, open relationships because well, because okay i do have this idea where i do think in most cases men are Mm -hmm. as painful as I just, options. I think men, if I just, they're able to... I just, just every man is I going just, to cheat. I, well, I'm, not I all like men just are red yourself by, yeah, by certain men like that. Tight. Can I tell you, the irony of the red pill movement convincing women that all men will cheat is like convincing women to just divorce men. Men are worthless if they cheat. Women are worthless if they cheat. Not the first time. Not even... No, the, the second time you're worthless. But the first time, maybe it's just a mistake and it's the worst thing you ever did and you fully regret it, right? I'm open to that. But if you do it again and again and again and again and again, I don't even understand what we're talking about anymore. What good are you? You might be a cheater, but a really good engineer. Cool, stick to engineering. You might be a cheater, but a pretty good president. Cool, stick to being a president. But this idea that like you can chronically cheat, you can be a serial cheater and there isn't some redemption there, not until you stop cheating and reform yourself, right? So the irony of red pill convincing women that all men are cheaters, men are trash then. The red pill is literally convincing women that men are trash by saying things like your man will cheat on you. Your man will have to be with other women. Then what good are they? Like, what good are they? Unless I'm open or poly or open to that, what good is a man who is undisciplined? And even if I'm poly or open, sorry, God, I always feel like I'm going at destiny, but like, honestly, like, fair is fair. Like, what's the point of being in an open polyamorous relationship if you still cheat? What's the point? What's the point of saying I'm a good partner or I'm an honest person if you're not? What is the point? So red pill is just giving feminist fuel to continue thinking men are trash. 
which is why, again, I'm really grateful to the good men in my life who do not cheat. And I'm really grateful to the good women in my life that don't think all men are cheaters because what a horrible narrative to have about a gender. What a horrible narrative to have that you think all men are cheaters. What a horrible, negative thing to think about all men. Like, I, I don't know. that Like, that. Mm -hmm. I think that, like, assumption, I think one of the, like, main things that I'm he hearing in this is, like, I don't really hear much of Darius in this, right? Like, you're saying, I think Darius is going to be this way. I think Darius is this way. And, like, Darius is just kind of silent over here being like, it's my birthday. <laughs> um, <laughs> His own roommate, his own best friend, says he has he me he I don't think Darius is a monogamous man. He has to fuck me. Damn. Yeah, but he said that he on, he's only known him as a single person, not in a relationship. Darius, right. you're gonna let them ruin your true? relationship right now? I don't think it's getting. I mean, I think he says that. Only I feel like I we're was, being pretty productive right now, single, actually. I, was talking to yeah, a lot of I don't people. think it's getting ruined. He hasn't seen me talk to other people, and then when I was with sushi, we were like. In uh, Polly or whatever, so but that was like fucking weird as fuck. But he wasn't here on that time, so you know how it is, bro. Like, she. What am I supposed to say? I, I don't know. Do like, you want to be Polly with why is uh, Mark Zena? Whoa. See, do you want to be Polly with Zena? What is Erudite asking? Is she asking Darius and Zena if they want to have a multiple romantic relationships with other people and together, or is she asking, do you want to have an open relationship? So let's see. Oh. Merc is calling me. Let me see. Do I want to do what? I'm waiting the question. Do you want to be like open with Xena or like one sided open? I guess. I would. I would ideally. Ideally, I would like to be uh, probably an open relationship. Probably in Polly, some sort of deal. Maybe something exactly. where it's not really. Like... Okay, so even Darius, who's telling us who he is and what he wants, he's like maybe open, maybe Polly. These are all different things. A one-sided open relationship is different. Like, that's the thing. Polyamory is a specific thing, and it has different models of polyamory. And ultimately, all these relationships are subjective to your relationship. So let me – so do you always understand what I'm saying? When I say polyamory means something, and then I say – and then you can actually have the, exactly the relationship you want, regardless of definitions. But if you're going to refer to the definition as like a point of power or like a, to say like, oh, I am this thing, then what is this thing and what definition are you using to refer to it? If you say, oh, I have a build a bear relationship and we just do what we want, that's different. But if you say I'm polyamorous, then you're referring to a word that should mean something to somebody and it should mean a specific thing. If you say I'm open, that means a specific thing. If you say I'm a swinger, that's a completely different thing i did 10 plus years of poly and i was never a swinger not once because it's a completely different thing it looks the same to people that are ignorant and don't know better but doesn't everything doesn't everything look the same to people who don't know better and that's the thing we're looking at a panel of people i'm sorry who don't know better even kyla asking the question i would love to know does erudite know that being poly and being open and having one-sided relationship, these are three models of relationships. That's like saying, hey, do you want to be um, – that's like literally asking to me, to my brain. That's like asking, um, do you want a, 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 a pumpkin pie, a strawberry pie, or a banana pie? They're all pie, but they are completely different pies. If you gave me a banana pie, I would throw up on you. So again, like, do they even understand, like, you're not asking the same question multiple times when you say, hey, do you want to be poly or open? Like, that's not the same question. Those are two different questions. Poly and open are very different. So again, do you want a blueberry pie or a banana pie? Because they're different, though they're both pies. Very different. But, but if she uh, came to you and said she just wants monogamous, will you be okay with it? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the idea. It's Ooh. like I'm an ideal. Would be. For the rest of your Can life? Why this discussion is For the up rest of my life? Well, I think naturally when you get older, you just become swingers. That's just how it is. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, once you become like 40, <laughs> like if I'm like 40, 50, like I'm going to be a swinger. But I think it's just how it is. Ain't no so, way. So, That's so funny. Okay, yeah. wait. Now, look, if Darius thinks literally by 40, 50, when I'm old, <laughs> I'm going to be a swinger. That's fair. Lots of people do end up swinging in their older ages. Swingers often tend to be middle-aged to boomer. Like, they're older, right? They're not young people traditionally because usually, you know, you're married and stuff. So, yeah, like, that's a possibility. But if Xena wants ideally monogamy, then she doesn't need to date Darius, who wants to think that swinging is a part of his future. Darius should be with somebody who's into polyamory and swinging and open relationships. Darius probably sounds more too dysfunctional to know what he really wants. But if he was healthy, I bet he probably could have have a pretty healthy open poly or swinging relationship it doesn't sound like monogamy is part of darius's like 
schema as a person. But Xena obviously wants monogamy. And I think Xena should become a person that is worthy of monogamy by recognizing that it's a value of hers and a, a value she will uphold. And, and she will not succumb to the temptation of just being held by somebody in order to just have a relationship. She will hold out for the person that treats her with dignity and wants to have this monogamous and similar relationship with her. I think she is allowed to want monogamy. And I think Darius is allowed to want to be a swinger at 45. Like they're allowed to want these things. There are whole communities of people around the world that run their lives these ways. The, the 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 people you meet on the internet are are not the only dating ecosystem you have. There's a whole the whole world is waiting for you. The whole planet is waiting for you. Not these 20 or 30 people you meet through Fresh and Fit in like panels. Life like, gets a little bit like, more boring, you got to spice it up. I think that's literally just what happens, especially if you're married. So if me and Zena are staying together forever, then we're naturally just more swingers. That's just how it is. I'm uh, not going to be, but you'll be on like a yacht and you're you gonna would. see like Jamal or something, and I'm gonna see one. Well, I'm not there. attracted to you. Know, you're saying Jamal, black names. You know, I'm not really typically ever. Attracted to that kind of I don't care. At the end of the day, <laughs> stop. I'm not sleeping the f around, so don't even do that. We're not doing that. I literally said I would always be monogamous on my side. Damn. I've already agreed oh, because I know that you're polyamorous or you want to be open, and that's the type no of way. behavior that you want. To First of all, I appreciate Zena using quotations for polyamorous amorous because even she knows it's bullshit but do you see how he's like trying to convince her to be different and to change and she's like i told you i'm gonna be monogamous this isn't up for debate girl you're allowed to be a monogamous and you can absolutely you're beautiful and i bet if you realize there was more of a world out there than fresh and fit you would find those men who would respect your boundaries and do those things with you right hold on let me just check something okay to do is be open and fuck bitch right and i'm drawing my line to where the romance and intimacy is where i draw the line Damn. this is casual wow. is one thing yeah but your version of what romance and intimacy is is different than mine so. damn yeah exactly. making different playlists different cuddling with them and taking showers yes. with them various is not okay I think cuddling damn. and taking showers is definitely an example for sure but i'm thinking Ain't sending no someone way. a song request and if i bought us a girl over a song and we have some and slow bonding and yeah bonding over i think this is so reasonable so again Darius is saying like, hey, like we don't have the same definitions of what um, like this is like, look, my husband and I did this. My husband and I had to sit down and say, OK, what am I allowed to do with my friends? What am I allowed to do with other people that aren't you? How am I allowed to touch other people? How am I allowed to talk to other people? What should be the expectation? I'm a pretty flirty person, but I also don't want to make anyone think I would actually ever cheat on my husband. And I would literally rather never flirt again with a soul than ever like make the mistake of having somebody think I'm the kind of woman that would cheat on my husband. Like what? No, I would only flirt with people that are rational and reasonable and safe. So like gay people, I would only flirt with the gays basically like women, men, non-binary people, like queer communities usually know how to platonically flirt without it meaning anything. I also noticed that like if I'm around like certain female bodied, female humans, female spirited humans, you know what I mean? Um, or gender neutral people, gender fluid people, they tend to be much more self-aware about their body and the context of the situation and like how being nudist is platonic and there's nothing inherently sexual. And so there's like a lot of safety. Um, there's like a lot of safety in that, right? We're not miscommunicating our intent. But if I was like in, with Fresh and Fit's crew and I got naked, there there's only one message that sends to them. Excuse me. But if you're in like in a, a, a like a BDSM, polyamorous, uh, progressive polyamorous sex positive polyamorous and nudist group like obviously getting naked might not mean anything it could just mean like Brittany was hot and so she wants to take off her clothes like it doesn't have to mean anything sexual and again I've lived this life and that's how I know also you can read books on it but I've lived this life my 20s were lived in communities that allowed me to feel very safe with my boundaries and my body literally so Zena is allowed to be a person who wants a certain thing and Darius is too. So let's skip now, okay, to this next clip. And this is a whole hour or 45 minutes after basically. So that was like 40 minutes in. This is like an hour 10 to so like 30 minutes after that initial conversation. Let's jump to this point here, okay? So it's just, it's, su it's, it's super, it's super understandable. So the, then the question is basically like, A, do you think that you're doing that a little bit to him then? Where like you're showing some possessiveness. It's probably coming from in part like some insecurities and stuff. But also like, uh, I don't know. I see a dynamic in couples a lot where they like, 
it seems like almost their jealousy expressions are like how they show like love in kind of like a backwards way. And like, I think there's a way to take that energy of trying to show each other love and like cultivate in like healthier directions, obviously. Do you think that's going on at all or am I? I mean, there's things he does like actively, like even when he came to see me, like he knew like one thing I was worried about was like, okay, I didn't want it just to be like content stuff. Cause like, like I, like since we started talking more serious and then even then, like he didn't even want to stream at all. And he's just like, you can stream if you want. So he left it to me. And he didn't even want to stream at all because, like, he wanted to be attentive and give me, like, undivided attention. And then even that, like, if my stomach growls, like, he was automatically getting food sent to the house. Like, my feet were hurting. He was carrying me, got me shoes, like, because I had heels on at the casino. And then he bought me, like, shoes for me, like, to wear so that my the heels weren't hurting me. Like, he just does stuff without me having to ask that shows, like, that attentiveness or whatever too so like stuff like that is obviously more reason why i'm so attracted Mm -hmm. and then like i know people will do like the whole which i don't care what the people say in that sense but it's the whole oh he likes her for content or whatever there's a lot that we talk about and discuss that's very private that he doesn't even put out there and do like he doesn't break that boundary he makes sure of it like we have he even came up with like this thing where he was like we can have a safe word even like when we're streaming so you can use a safe word so i know when like i'm crossing the boundary so we know what not to put on there and the fact that he did that for me is like really important too see okay so again in life think of it like a like leveling up in a video game or something where Xena is starting off in the beginning. She dates like a Sneeko, who's just like a piece of shit, love Sneeko, piece of shit dating, horrible boyfriend, don't date him. Okay, love him, God bless. I hope you feel, I hope you're having a great time, Sneeko. But like, no, you don't get to pretend you're a good boyfriend, okay? So she gets really effed over by like the energy of like a Sneeko. And she's like, what the F is this, right? Then she goes to a Darius who like pays attention to the small things and makes committal, like makes a commitment, a gesture, thinks of her in small ways. And she's like, wow, this is like, amazing and she hasn't even realized like there are other levels to the video game and she hasn't reached them yet but she thinks she's at the final boss and I'm like no 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 girl you're just like on like level two there are so many more levels to this right and so once Cena realizes like Darius is a stepping stone into her joy she'll realize like oh because they just said it a few minutes ago they're not compatible I saw your comments you guys say um you guys said, uh, I'm sorry, but they both just proved that they shouldn't be together. Or, right, they're just not on the same page. The relationship is one-sided um, and done since this debate live streamy thing. Okay, I literally, I think you said and. Oh, I freaking hate that emoji. It's blocking out your guys' sentences from me. But literally, exactly. Th- they've already proven they're not compatible. They've already proven there's too much dysfunction. They've already proven they're not on the same page, but they're going to keep fighting for this relationship because they literally, like Xena especially, has no idea that just because a boy is nice to her, just because he was thoughtful for a moment, so, okay. That's why when I hear people say like, oh, I just want somebody who's nice. Okay, serial killers allegedly are very nice to their girlfriends while secretly killing people behind closed doors. What was that famous husband who had a wife and a daughter and was like the greatest like father in the world and greatest husband, but like he killed 30 women. It doesn't matter if people are nice. Like I want a person with values who are consistent, but you wouldn't know that if you didn't spend all your time with a person, love a person, get to know their consciousness. Like again, saying I want somebody who's just nice to me. Well, okay, girl, a a hooker will be nice to you. Just pay a sex worker. Like what do you mean you want somebody who's nice or somebody who's thoughtful? Your friend should be this thoughtful. When I'm with my friends, I try really hard to be pretty thoughtful about their needs without overstepping boundaries because I'm not their boyfriend or girlfriend, right? So obviously there are certain things partners should be more thoughtful about, I think, than your friends. But even your friends should show some level of thoughtfulness or consideration towards you. So poor Zena is sitting here, literally on level two, thinking like, oh, I'm at the final boss. I'm about to beat the game. Darius is my... No, he's not your Princess Peach. He's not your prize. Absolutely not. Darius, Xena is not your woman. Like, this is not going to work. I'm calling it right now. Not because I know everything about these people, not because I know into their minds, but because I don't need to, to see that the dysfunction is too big. They're too young, too inexperienced, and don't even know they can have something better. Xena just said, I want to be monogamous, but I know men will cheat. And Darius just said, I want to be swingers at 45. Why are we even pretending this is going to work? What are we doing? And I know people are like, Brittany, you can't just make judgments about people's relationships. If you can't, 
you shouldn't even be talking about being in one. You have got to know how to make a judgment about what you're seeing to know what you need in your own relationship. When you're on a first date with somebody and they bring up this conversation, that should be it. No second date. You want to be swingers at 45? I don't want to be. No second date. Why are we even having the conversation? Because they're still getting to know themselves. They're still growing. They're actively saying out loud, I don't know who I am and I don't know what I want, but I think I want this. You're not ready. And this relationship should be a lesson, a tool you're gathering to get ready. And then he said to, when I come to Arizona, it was his idea where he was like, let's have a couple of days with just no streaming, just me and you. And that was his idea. And I like that because it's like, it shows that he wants to be. Yeah. Me. I think it might be worth giving him some of that like trust back then. Like what I'm hearing from Darius, and again, I could be wrong. Is that like kind of like the landmine boundaries that like Destiny and I both talked about? Is that like for somebody who's experiencing landmine boundaries where it's like, there's a lot of no's, there's very few yeses, but also they're kind of pushing you down and being like, go do that thing, uh, is like essentially that person doesn't really trust you because there's all these landmines everywhere, um, which sucks, especially if you're intentionally doing things to be considerate of them and to be mindful of them, to feel like it's not really earning you the trust that you're trying to cultivate. Mm, see, why is Kyla giving the advice that, sh that Zena needs to trust Darius more? Why? No, she needs to end the relationship. Like, why are they even talking about building trust in a relationship where they both want completely different end goals? What are we even talking about? Why is Kyla giving the advice that she should give Darius more trust? They need to end this relationship. There is no relationship to build off of. One wants to be monogamous. One wants to be a swinger. What are we even talking about? It can be tough. And again, I don't know if Darius is even here anymore, but. I feel like the I feel like the biggest more than like I think ninety nine percent of the I think ninety nine percent of the problem Zena honestly got too is that it just feels like you honestly don't even know what you want yet not to knock you anything but like obviously yeah. you're coming out of one relationship you're figuring out other shit for other things um, if you don't know what you mm -hmm. want one hundred percent or even fifty percent then not only are you like constantly resetting and re exploring your own boundaries and communicating them in unclear ways because you don't even know what they are with Darius you like don't even know what the boundaries of yourself are like I don't even know right yeah. now if in your mind you've envisioned what a perfect relationship looks like it feels like you stumbled onto somebody that makes you feel good for a lot of yeah. different reasons which is great but now you don't exactly know what to do with it right like a dog that's caught a car almost and you don't really know how you want that relationship to look it probably do you well to spend a lot of like personal time just figuring out like what do i want an yeah, actual relationship please. to look like because i don't yeah i don't know if you because if you don't have that answer for yourself like now well, beginning well not really though because Zena did say she wants monogamy so she does know what she wants she just doesn't believe she can have it she does know what she wants she just doesn't believe she can have it which does look like not knowing what you want same with Darius even, like he does want a swinging relationship. So again, the advice should not be you guys need to learn to trust each other. The advice should be you guys need to break up. This is not the relationship for you. I'm so glad you guys dated to know this, but like that's the point of dating is to figure out if this person is meant to be with you or not. People seem to mis sometimes mistake difficulty in relationship for passion. Yes, a good relationship won't be so difficult for you. Uh, feel like you're swimming upstream 24 seven. Yes, exactly. It won't feel like you're fighting the devil every day. That's what I'm trying to explain to people. When I was in toxic dysfunctional relationships, I felt like every day was a battle and I didn't know why. And now I'm in the easiest, greatest relationship of my freaking life. It is so amazing. And everything has to do with the connection of our values. We're on the same page. We had a very serious courtship, very seriously minded for marriage because we're older, of course, and it makes sense. And then um, we, 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 we fundamentally believe the same about communication, right? Like we have the best intentions for each other. We don't lie to each other and we don't break trust. So obviously we're not going to have problems. We don't have, I don't have to worry about, oh, is he, is he hiding something from me? Is he doing something for me? Because like he himself doesn't even believe in it. Like we're just not those people who believe in it. We just share and share and overshare and share. We're constantly talking, constantly telling each other things, constantly like we don't even the whole like, oh, are you allowed to see his phone? Like what phone? We use each other's phones. We use each other's like if he needs to my, use my phone or I have to use his phone or if I need his tablet or if he needs like we just use each other's stuff. Like it's our stuff. Like, yes, it's his phone and my phone. But if I ever needed to like use his phone, I could just click into his use it like a house phone. We're married. It's ours. Like, you know what I'm saying? And look, you don't have to have a relationship like that. But there is no sense of like, is he hiding something from me when there, he has nothing to hide? What is he going to hide? He spends all his time with me. We spend all our time together. 
And we like he could use my computer. I could use, use his computer if I needed to. I try not to touch his computer, though, because he's like he likes his, you know, and he never touches mine because like, why would we need to? But if we did, we could like, you know what I mean? Like we I get like I just don't even what are we talking about here? OK, let me go to this because uh, I want to show you guys. Hold on. So next clip. OK, so this is an hour and 32 minutes in and I want you to see the way that Xena exhibits like dysfunctional displays of toxicity and how this is a specific bubble. Going back to that comment I just read about passion, this is Xena mimicking what she thinks is like appropriately passionate in a relationship. So hold on, we got to go here. I think I'm actually, I'm, let me see. Uh -oh. Okay, if I were <laughs> Xena, I would look at Darius who is just turning 20. This is Supreme, right? Rick at Supreme. 26 tomorrow, who says on his stream constantly. Wait, wait, wait. How old is Darius? Oh. Conversation has lacked a Dan, and I want to provide the Dan perspective. Uh -oh. Okay? If I were <laughs> Xena, I would look at Darius, who is just turning 26 tomorrow, oh, who 26. says on his stream constantly that What's male up? attractiveness peaks at 32 and that he's going to look like Pedro Pascal, which is in six years. If I am a 29 year old Xena, the question I would be asking myself is how, how suspicious am I? Oh, uh, how old are you? Well, you don't have to I'm say. 27. Okay, you're She's 27. 27. He's the question I would ask myself if I were you is how likely is it that in six years when Darius thinks he's going to reach peak attractiveness, is he going to be... Wait, wait. What's the lore on Xena? We said, man, Xena makes me sad, but then I remember she's a horrible person and I'm okay. Wait, what's the lore on Xena? What am I missing? I don't know anything about her except she works for Fresh and Fit. She had a moment with Sneeko. Now she's with Darius. That's all I know about her. Did she do something really bad or is she just like in the Fresh and Fit bubble? I'd be interested in a 34 year old Xena. Is he like, cause the read I get from you is that you're looking for, you're looking for a ride or die for life. You're looking for a relationship that has prospects to be a ride or die for life. Am I wrong? Um, ride or die for life. What do you, someone what do you, you can mean? love and that's going to love you. <laughs> yeah. And he doesn't care when it comes to like the whole age phase. Of, or I believe that when it, it comes to short term that's... relationships. The, the read that I get from Darius, I believe that that's true when it comes to short-term relationships. I don't, think I don't he, believe yeah, Darius he's not is interested. For like eighteen-year-olds and twenty-year-olds or anything like that. So. I don't. I wouldn't believe personally. I would be very suspicious if Darius claimed to be interested in a relationship that was for life. Okay, especially. I mean, he that's that he's what we're be... talking about is things like that more long-term. That's why we're having more long-term discussions and actually getting to know each other in the sense of what do you plan in like the next four years? What do you plan in the next five years? Like we're actually having those deep conversations. Yes, yeah, not short-term. I can't like tell that. you what Darius wants. I've actually is... already told him I'm not doing short-term. I'm not wasting my time. And then he's telling me, if Zena is interested in long-term dating, she can't be with Darius. They don't want the same thing out of life. Girl, pick your life mate with strategy. Be strategic. Be strategic when choosing your life mate. Choose somebody that's actually compatible, someone you actually want to wake up to every day, somebody you actually want to spend time with, somebody who doesn't care how many times you text them a day or call them a day, somebody who actually loves you and respects your time, and somebody who vibes with how much like attention you want to give and vice versa, someone who's good with boundaries. Like, you know what I mean? Like, find somebody you're going to vibe with. You know what I mean? Me not to worry about a biological clock and saying like your take for example right now he's like you're brainwashed by this red pill shit like da 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 da, -da that's a meme there is no biological clock like and doesn't like me to say things like Tell that when I've said the, the same thing says, that you said for example listen, yeah but when I've said exactly whatever, whatever what you the red said, pill says I'm telling you, you that it is down. reasonable to be concerned about this to yes. a degree okay and he'll shut me up about it <sighs> okay the thing is like he doesn't like me to say that stuff. It, it, uh, Darius is telling you what he needs, okay, through his actions. A man named Jean-Paul Sartre would agree with this, okay? Like, whatever somebody says they believe is irrelevant. You have to look at what they do. And it seems really important to Darius to have romance with women, right? To, to flirt and to pursue and to chase and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. And it seems like your concern, which I think is a legitimate concern, is that in the beginning, he tried very, very strongly to convince you that you were going to be special to him and that it's going to be like a long long-term thing and that he wouldn't do this 
So one of the reasons that I'm not the biggest fan of Darius is he's got a little bit of F-boy energy. You know, he's got a little fuckboy energy. But also he's just a mess and dysfunctional. And a lot of people in like poly, queer, open situations can be like that. There are always fuckboys in poly circles, guys. Just because you're open or swingers doesn't mean you're not a toxic fuckboy, right? Like don't think just because they're coming out with it and actually saying and being honest with you about wanting other people that they're not going to be like cheaters or liars or abuse you or spread STIs, okay? So everybody chill. But I do think like one of the reasons I've never liked Darius is he comes off like somebody who's not only dysfunctional, but that he mis uh, communicates with people on purpose to make it sound like he's the victim a lot. And he's doing it with Xena, where Xena's trying to be very like dominant and say what she means and say what she's willing to do and very clear with her language. And he's not being clear with her. He should say Xena. I love you. You're a wonderful person. I'm not the man for you. I would like to be a singer at 45. If 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 any of these people really cared for Xena, they would tell her to break up with Darius, which actually the only person who's telling her to do that is Supreme, which is so ironic. But like literally, like literally, why is Kyla telling her to like give more trust to Darius? No. Like why is Darius not breaking up with Xena? And then Xena she doesn't have it for herself. I'll tell you. I'll be your Auntie Brittany. I'll be your big sister. Xena, break up with him, girl. He's not worth it. He is on his own journey, and you guys are now ready to split apart. Go on your own journey. You know what I'm saying? He does not want what you want, and there are plenty of good men in the world. Men can be good. There are very good men in the world who will never cheat on you, who will not deceive you, who will be honest with you. They are not in the fresh and fit bubbles, though, honey. They are not hanging out with Sneeko. They are not friends with other people. They're not out here. Like, I don't know who else to name. But you know what I mean. They're not friends with certain people that you seem to associate with. They are in completely different worlds. They are in completely different worlds. They're found all over, but they're not hanging out with guys who are misogynistic towards women. And no offense, girl, if you are a woman who holds internalized misogyny and you think women are nothing and women are trash, which we'll show a clip of Xena later in the night that I'm just like not a fan of, um, then you're also going to attract men who internally like hate women. You know what I mean? Like there's a watch. What, watch when I get to the point where Xena like talks bad about women, you are going to attract men that think about women that way. And you're going to be, you're a woman. You can't be with women. Or, sorry, you can't be with men who think badly of women and not expect him to treat you badly. It makes no sense. This stuff. That might just be part of the chase for Darius. I'm not saying that it is. He's doing actively right I'm now. Sorry. And thinking that if I'm with a man who treats other women badly, but he treats me well, like that's what a pick me is, right? A pick me is somebody who lets men treat other women poorly, but because he treats you nicely or picks you, then he's still a good man, girl. No, if he treats other women poorly, if he speaks of women poorly, he's going to treat you poorly. Period. Now, that's not the beginning. That's what he's saying right now, where he's telling everyone, no, I'm agreeing about monogamy. Monogamy is not the issue here. And I'm just saying I don't want like the playlists and stuff like that. And then he agreed. OK, cuddling and showering. He's not single no more. He's not going to do that if he's committed in a relationship. So last week when referring to you, he said, put these put. When did he Whoa. say that? Live in front of thousands of people on Destiny's stream. Ain't no way. Shit. <laughs> but when is what clip? I'm trying to say. Yeah, have the clip. Like, what is the context? Well, I don't- no matter the, the context, context, that's context. rough. The context was ongoing disputes Jesus. he was having with you in a fresh relationship. Why are you making me join <laughs> back? I never he's said back, this. Back. I never said this. So why is it relevant in here? Why are we continuing this? <laughs> is that how Darius does this? Oh my gosh, why are we talking about like my life? Like, why is it relevant here? Like, oh my gosh, why are you guys trying to make me look bad? Oh my gosh. He plays a victim. He's a fuckboy who plays victim, and I don't like it. And it's like, it's like, mm -mm, it's just fuckboy puppy energy. He's a bottom, but a fuckboy. It's very confusing. Or he's like a switch. There's something about him that's like, he feels really weak in character to me. So he doesn't feel that like um dominant to me, but he also doesn't feel like a because like I don't mean bottoms, like turn up some bottoms because like bottoms can be very dominant and like secure in themselves, obviously. I mean, in terms of like character, his character is really weak. And then he comes in and he's like, oh my gosh, why are you guys making me out to be the bad guy? Um, sir, sir, break up with Xena. If you cared about Xena and her dignity, you would break up with her. I think it's it says something about you when you don't let people go. 
Let people go. Don't cheat on them. Don't lie to them. Don't deceive them. Don't don't lead them on. You heard this girl. She really wants monogamy. She wants a guy who's going to love her above any other desire to be with somebody else. You know, I don't cuddle with nobody else. It's off limits. Only my husband gets my cuddles because my cuddles are nice. Let me tell you. If Zena wants to put boundaries down and say like, hey, I'd rather you not cuddle with other people, she's allowed to do that. And Darius is allowed to find people he can cuddle with. Darius should break up with her if he in any way cares about Zena. Because Zena's too freaking weak to do it herself. Happy birthday, Darius. He's doing the red pill take that I've given you before about my biological clock, my age. And he's trying to say that you do that that does matter to you. And when you're in your peak of 30s, right, because you apparently say you'll be in your peak in your 30s, that you'll actively probably not be attracted to me because I'll be what, 33, 34. And you'll probably look for younger women. And then he, that's what he's trying to put in my head to have that sense of insecurity, right? But I already know you shut me down on that. And then he's trying to say that apparently you refer to me down. as pussy. Is pussy. Hold you. on. Okay, hold on. Nigga, I'm already... Nigga, I work for Fresh and Fit. You don't got to red pill me, nigga. I'm already red pill. Shut I'm up. Not, let I'm me not, finish. This is nigga, not a... can you shut up and let me finish? Then he's saying that you say... <laughs> she's super rude. This is just like... This funny for the internet. And she's good at clickbaiting. But this is like... Like hate panels. That's why I hate this energy of like... And I get it. It's like... It's just like... She does have a tendency to be very dysfunctional like I'll, I'll we'll keep going you'll see it gets worse about me is pussy is pussy right uh -huh. and then apparently that you need to always be romantic to other women is what he's saying oh wait i want to this comment says they actually kind of make sense together because they're similarly sick anyway so here's the thing toxic is toxic and dysfunctional dysfunctional and that's what i want people to admit out loud you cannot say i'm in a dysfunctional relationship and it's my partner's fault you're in the dysfunctional relationship because you yourself are dysfunctional Healthy people, okay, healthy people do not exist in dysfunctional relationships. Healthy people get out of dysfunctional relationships. And that's my point I want to make because even I, when I was in my dysfunctional relationship, had this illusion, this cognitive dissonance that I was the healthy one and he was unhealthy. But no, it was clear we were both unhealthy because we were both in this relationship. I was consenting to being in this relationship. And I was in like, every time I dated somebody and I stayed, even though I knew I wanted them to change, that was a part of my dysfunction. My desire to wait for people's potential was my toxicity. That is my toxicity. Zena would walk all over someone who treats her well. Zena, dysfunctional Zena, wouldn't know what to do with somebody who treats her well. And she would, she has like a lot of trauma in my opinion that she needs to fix and a lot of like uh, bubbles she needs to pop before she really understands like how much bad information she has in her head. But she has a lot, right? She has a lot of bad information that she's working with, which, you know, isn't exactly her fault because if you don't know, you don't know. If you really grow up in a bubble and most people do and think I have all the information at my disposal, then they're never going to think to look for more, Right. They're never going to think I could be someone different. So I'm hoping she comes across my video and goes, oh, hey, this Brittany Simon girl, like she's saying I can be someone different. Do you think that's true? Like does she is she right? Does she really do this? Yeah, girl, I did that, girl. I did that for real, for real, for real. You can do this, but you have to know you can do it. And then you have to believe in yourself enough to do it. And then you have to actually get it done, which is hard. You know what I mean? So of course they're perfect for each other because they're both toxic. But I'm really rooting for Xena to be more than this. And I don't care what Darius does because like honestly, like I'm not invested in his like growth. But maybe it's the woman in me. I'm kind of invested in Xena's and I really want to see her be a better person. But she's got to start with leaving fresh and fit in that bubble, going to a different bubble and meeting lots of good men. Because right now, if she's only exposed to those kinds of men, none of those are good men. And that, oh, it's short term, you're not looking for long term, and that you were only romantic with me for the chase and you're done, basically is what he's saying. No, what I'm, what I'm saying is I think that the suspicions that you have about what Darius is up to and why are legitimate and I think accurate and reasonable concerns that you would have. And the, uh, the commitments that he has purported to make to you, I would be... It, it would be it's overwhelmingly unlikely Damn. he would have to make like demonstrations mm -hmm. that are above and beyond and extremely consistent and mm -hmm. the conflicts that you guys are having right now would be enough to if i were in your position if i desire the things out of a relationship that i think you desire you know based on the things that you've said like enough to turn tail and like run 
Mm. Turn the ship around. And this Jesus. is advice for Darius too. See how Supreme is saying, if you want what you say you want, you have to leave this relationship based. Oh my God. Right? If you're really serious about this, Darius, like if, if you're really serious about giving Xena what Xena wants and, and being really fair to Xena and being honest mm -hmm. and truthful to Xena, um, then you have got to worry about sustained superior performance. There can't be any more of these, you know, I was go. texting a girl and now we have to talk about it, right? Especially if you guys negotiated that this is a thing that wouldn't happen or something. You've got to be very fair in identifying what you think Xena wants. Xena, you have to be very clear about what you want that there is. I have no reason to believe I'm you already haven't already been. 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 Yeah. She's been clear. She's already been clear. Break up with him. She's already been clear. If anyone cares about Xena, they would encourage her to break up with Darius. I'm with Supreme on this. Like, this is not heading towards success. Yes. Okay? And, and it's got to be sustained superior performance. You guys have been together for a very short amount of time. The way that you guys mm -hmm. talk to each other, in seven years with my wife, I have never said f*** you. In seven years of marriage with my wife, we have never had an argument like that is even nearly mm -hmm. as you know suspicious or or heated or angry as you guys have had with each other maybe some relationships can work that way but that I is mean, not a healthy relationship talk to you is like okay i'm a hood ass bitch and he half black like okay 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 so now she's pulling the i'm from the hood card he's half black card she did it she pulled out the monolith she just said i am a stereotype she just said, it's my background and my culture. And she just said, I'm never going to abandon it. That's what she just said. Whether she likes it or not, she just said, basically, I'm a woman, so of course I'm neurotic. I'm a hood girl, so of course I'm dysfunctional. That's really sad. That's really bad. That's dysfunctional. That's so sad. And that is absolutely not the model we want for our communities, nor is it the, the stereotype that is accurate to the individual experience, the individual consciousness. That's not good. That's a you problem, girl. And that's the bubble you were raised in. And that's what I'm trying to say. She might not know better because she might be mimicking off her bubble, but it's a specific bubble. So it's true some couples yell at each other, demean each other, hit each other, cheat on each other. And maybe their parents did the same thing and they've been together for 40 years. But have they been together and healthy? I want together and healthy. I want healthy relationships. I do not want to rely on allowing bad behavior because it's culture. I think culture is a great reference to ex 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 like understanding it, but then saying let's break generational curses. You ever heard of that, Zina? Breaking generational curses? Because you got a lot of them, girl. And he grew up in the mud, so I, I'm sorry. Uh, there is other characters. Is what, though, That's bro. not this the point. Much, I think the point is, is like you guys are already facing uh, challenges within the start of your relationship when it's supposed to be a pretty good like honeymoon no, stage. Never, but I you guys are already facing so really well. like uh, basic, I'd very deal with turbulence and not a smooth ride. All right? I'd rather well, handle no, dude, bro, no, 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 bro. You legit, there's one that... Okay, hold on. She just said something where she's like, I want to handle the turbulence and then hit a smooth ride. With my partner, again, one of the signs, one of the indicators, some of the evidence that I had that he was my person and we were going to have a healthy relationship was that it was smooth in the beginning and it was smooth through. That it was so smooth because we didn't have to argue about what we wanted. I was like, hey, I want this. And he's like, I want this. And it matched and it matched and it matched. And every answer we gave each other, everything we talked about, the way our families vouched for us, everything made sense. Everything made sense. There was no battle of, you know, what do we want? What kind of a relationship model do we want to mimic? It was just, it was so clear we were on the same page. And I know some people joke like he's the male version of me, but like we're very different people in terms of personality. But in terms of values, like, yeah, we're very, very similar. We're similar enough that we don't have to have any of these turbulent moments. I think the worst we ever have is like, um, how should we wash this pot in the sink? Like, how much soap do we like to use? Like, a lot of our conversations are about, like, um, how to clean the floor. <laughs> how do I clean the bathtub? Like, do you like to do it with this chemical or this chemical? Like, a lot of what my husband and I or my partner and I are constantly figuring out about each other is how do we like to do laundry? Like, he's much more meticulous about doing laundry than I am. I mix my colors and my whites, y'all. I'm a heathen. But he's like, no, we're separating our colors. And I was like, okay. 
And so, like, again, when you're in a really healthy relationship, you're not fighting about the big things, whether or not we're going to be monogamous or swingers. You're you're going to have conversations about, like, you know, what's the best way to, you know, do laundry, I guess. And that's when I say, like, it was easy marrying my husband. Like, making the choice to marry my partner was so easy because the most difficult thing we had to figure out was, like, laundry. Because our values were so similar. You know? Yeah, I was like three days ago or whatever. You kept agitating the f*** out of me. You kept messing me like, you know, I know you're talking to all those hoes. I know you fucking hoes. I was literally at the casino with a relevant and Zella just having a good time the whole night. And you're like, oh, you're just with all those hoes. You want to talk to me? And I was like, f*** you. You Wrong. were so annoying. And when then you were at the house party laying up on the couch. That was the last argument we had. I was at a house party on the couch? Yeah, when uh, Danny. Well, regardless, TLDR, you said you whenever you were annoying the fucking man, I was like, dude, this is reasonable. And I said, fuck you, fuck you. And then you were like, oh, you're gonna punish me for that? Wait, you're Zena, I have a question like, though. Let's just like. Well, Zena, if you actually started a relationship with a man who shared the same values as you, monogamy about relationship about communication, do you think you was? Okay, I don't know who this girl is, but she is on point as well. What's this girl's name, guys? You said her name was Bella. She is on point. She knows what's up. She knows what's up. So we have the same turmoil, or do you think it would so, be actually smoother? Well, I mean, how the relationship started is us actually talking and coming to agreeing on most things when it came to how. Mm. So Zena is falling. Okay, so this is okay. This is a question I got a lot during my courtship. Where Zena is saying, hey, Darius and I talked about this, though, so we're good. But the problem is, is that Darius's life doesn't reflect what he says. Darius talks a bigger game than he can make happen, right? If Darius really loves Zena, he would let her go, right? He would break up with her because he can't be the thing she wants. But he's keeping her hostage because that's just how he does things. So, um, and Zena can't break up with him because this is the best thing she's ever experienced thus far, which isn't saying much. But it's enough that she doesn't want to lose something she thinks could grow into something potentially really great, which is a mistake. But okay, so learn. This is the life. This is what she has to learn. This is her. This is her canon. This is part of the story. This is, needs to happen. Okay, so in my courtship, a lot of people doubted the relationship because they said, "Well, he might talk a big game, but you guys haven't spent enough time together." But the thing is, it's not very hard to verify what people are doing with their life when you have the right conversations. Like, guys, listen to me when I say this. Oh my God. Darius and Zena are in each other's faces, literally screaming at each other about how, how incompatible and wrong they are for each other. But it's not enough to break up. When I'm with my partner and he says all the right things, all the truly right things, it's not that he's saying the right things and I misunder or the wrong things and I'm misunderstanding it. He's saying the right things literally through and through and he's telling me how he got there and where the value comes from and why his morals work this way and why he thinks the way he does. Darius and Zena are having conversations where she goes, I already talked to him about this and he said, yeah, monogamy. But here we are in the internet fighting and they can't agree on what monogamy me means. My partner and I didn't just agree to monogamy. We then defined monogamy. You can't just agree to monogamy. You have to then define it. What does it mean? Down to how long you spend time with your siblings or friends. Like I'm definitely one of those people that when I'm in a relationship, I do become more of a relationship person. My siblings are the same way. My parents are the same way. Yeah, yeah we love our friends. But I'm about to do life with this person. So obviously, I don't do life with my friends. Like, I love my friends. I love my inner circle. I love my siblings. But I don't do life with them. I don't build life with them. I build my life. And then my life and their life intercept on occasion. And that's really exciting. But I don't do life with my friends. I don't want to do life with my friends. I love you all so much. I do life with my partner. Same like my parents. My parents love their friends. Their cousins mostly. Like, are all their friends. And we love our people. We want to see you. But like, we're not building a life with you. We're building life with each other. So again, when, you, when you're talking to a person, it doesn't matter how long you've been dating. It doesn't take long for a person to tell you who they are. Darius and Zena are telling each other over and over again who they are, and neither of them are accepting it. Because if either of them could listen to one another, they would say, break up. And that's the thing I'm going to do. I cannot believe Kyla or any, like Bella's kind of doing it and Supreme is doing it. They're the only two people that are saying break up, basically. Why isn't Kyla saying break up? Probably because she doesn't want to get into their business, honestly, fair. I will get into your business. Break up. 
not compatible. If I was a matchmaker, matchmaker, send me a match. This is not the match. If I was a matchmaker and I put Xena and Darius together, y'all should fire me and give me zero stars on Yelp. Are you listening to yourself? If this was a matchmaker's job and she paired up Xena and Darius, would this not be a fail of a matchmake? What are we doing? What are we even talking about? Relationship should be formed, actually. That's kind of what I'm doing. It doesn't seem like you guys are in agreement about basic stuff. Basic stuff as in there's things that I'm bringing up that I don't think he realizes were, in a sense, not normal for most people, yeah. But as far as, like, for example, like I said, we've had the talks about the exclus exclusiveness and stuff like that and long-term and all that. Most of the stuff we've had talks about when it comes to even deciding to be in the relationship, we did come to, like, we, like, we agreed with, and that's why. Mm. They might have agreed to it, but I don't think any of them were agreeing to what they thought they were. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. Why are we having this conversation now if we agree to the same thing? So again, this is when you know you're getting played. You're getting played by your cognitive dissonance. Are you getting played by the person you're talking to? But something, you're not on the same page. I was like, okay, I think I can be in a relationship with this person. But seeing more things in like his nature, I'm like, I feel like I am coming to understanding, which even Relevant said it too. I'm like, I don't think, even though he agreed to monogamy and stuff like that, I just feel like he would want to at least sleep around. And my only thing that I've been saying is I just don't want the romance factor. See how she's doing this thing where she's projecting onto Darius. Like you do want to sleep around, don't you? And Darius is probably like, well, maybe like I want to be a swinger. So kind of, but also like, I just want to be affectionate with my female friends. And she's like, no affection with your female friends. You guys are just not on the same page. It's not that deep. But I'm just sick, feeling like, okay, I feel like he just wants to sleep. Like that's just him. Like he just wants I, to sleep I think around. if like, I think if your partner is saying something and you can't trust it two weeks in, I think that's like a really big flag to me, right? If they're, yeah. I feel like well, you're not taking him at his word. Me. You're just yeah, not I taking agree. him at his word. And I understand, just to be clear, I understand why you're not taking him at his word. You have a bunch of like reasons as to why you're not taking him at mm -hmm. his word. But if you're two weeks into a relationship and you can't even give him enough trust to trust him at his word, I don't know like how this fosters like more trust further on, right? Well, so I understand like into, really and stuff like she's that. She's running into legitimate reasons to not take him at his word because they're I already said that. I already said that, right? I said, I understand Wait. why, but if in two weeks into the relationship, you already feel like no matter what Darius says about what he wants, where she's like, yeah, I can do monogamy is essentially what- See, this is where Kyla's being confusing. She, she has reasons not to trust Darius, but Kyla's basically saying, but give him more trust anyways. And that's why it's confusing. I don't think Kyla means that though, or maybe Supreme and I are both confused. I assume that's why Supreme is confused because that's why I'm confused. Like she's trying to tell them to break up, without breaking up but or maybe I don't want to project onto Kyla I could just talk to her about it but I again maybe that's where I'm not understanding what she's saying like Supreme is saying she already has her reasons for not trusting him break up and I'm saying yeah break up and Kyla's saying well yeah but she needs to give Darius more trust or it's a bad sign that she's not giving him more trust which is confusing to send to someone like Xena who doesn't understand like we are not saying to give Darius more trust we're saying to break up. And that's what's confusing. Does, does that, did I even explain it very well? Do you know what I'm saying? So Zena might be hearing Kyla say, you're not giving Darius enough trust. I should give him more trust. And I'm saying, no, 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 don't give him more trust. You have plenty of reasons not to. You should break up. And that's what I think Supreme is saying. It's like, whoa, why are you saying it as if she should give him more trust? Because that's what I keep hearing Kyla say is like, give him more trust. And I'm saying, no, 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 don't give him more trust. Break up. Does that make sense? Are you guys hearing the same thing I'm hearing? what he's saying but he's also saying like i would like to be open yeah. but it sounds like he's saying as well he realizes that there's a lot of messy complications that come with that so he's also willing to do monogamy and you're saying i don't trust him at all i think one side and open is the only option right and so it's like you're already not you're already not in negotiation anymore because he's not really like, having a voice even though i understand why i can't trust him it's like yeah how i said like the type to take his shirt off or like give somebody his yeah. shirt off his in the same sense, when it comes to that, like, obviously, like, how he'll say, like, I mean, ideally, I probably would want open. I see that, and I know, damn, if he's just committing to monogamy, he's not going to be 100% pleased with that if that's not what would be ideal for him. So, of course, in my mind, I want him to have, like... It's interesting that she gives him what he needs in terms of non-monogamy, but not herself in terms of monogamy. Complete happiness in the relationship. So... I feel like that's something like I'm the same way. I would ov obviously rather take some sacrifices to make sure my partner's pleased. Whether that's healthy or not, that's just how I am as a person. Ooh, 
whether that's healthy or not, that's just how I am as a person. Whether it's healthy or not, that's just how I am as a person. And this is why I say the world knows who it is. Zeta knows who she is. She's saying it out loud. She's telling you who she is. She's not healthy. She has a lot to work on, but she is right now not interested in being someone different. Bummer. I feel like you're sacrificing more than him in that sense, no? Well, if he's saying he wants to be monogamous, he's going to sacrifice that happiness. So that's where we're butting heads where I'm like, no, you could fight. No, I'm going to be monogamous for you. So I don't know if your conversation is like you guys aren't at the stage in your relationship where you're talking about openness. You're at the stage of a relationship where you're trying to negotiate trust. You guys are at like the very bare basics of like relationship negotiation right now. So like you guys are talking Mm -hmm. about open versus closed, but you can't even trust what he's saying to actually hold weight, which might be his fault, but it also might be your stuff. It's probably a combination of both, which means we have to back the whole bus up and go, we probably need to talk about why we can't trust each other in what we say. Because like, how do you negotiate anything with your partner? Like if your partner says, I'm committed to this and you go, I don't leave you for Scott, right? Let him do whatever the fuck he wants. And then if there's issues, anybody and everybody's getting the fuck stabbed. It's that simple. That's my nigga. I'm not letting him go. That's the final resolve of this situation. He's mine. He's mine. He's mine. He's mine. Nobody can have him. I'm keeping that man. If he's going to fuck bitches, he can. The second they get too comfortable, I'm going to be right the fucking behind him to slap a bitch silly. That's it. That's my declaration. You could clip it. You could send it to every hoe. That's it. I think that's it. I think we finally settled it. That's okay. it, bro. Fair. He's going to do what he wants and I want him to do what he wants to do. Moral of the story is he is mine. Good job, guys. What do you want, okay. Wonderbox? This is what dysfunction is. This is what toxicity is. This is not a vibe. Not a vibe. Bad for your skin, bad for your health, not a vibe. Now, I'm not telling Xena she's a bad person. Dysfunction doesn't mean bad person. It just means unhealthy, which could lead to something that's really bad. But ultimately, like, this is it. This is a grown woman at 27 choosing to be this person because like she said it might not be healthy but it's just who she is when you're dating people and you say i want this relationship you can have it but you gotta believe you can get it in the first place she literally said i want monogamy but i don't think it's possible so i'll settle for this or She's saying Darius can do whatever he wants and secretly she's hoping that he just naturally chooses to be with her. (sighs) Bros. Now, in contrast, I want to show you guys Dr. Kirk Honda talking about the show Ultimatum. This is season two or three, depending on who you are, probably two if you're Netflix, three if you count queer people. And this is Psychology in Seattle. He's a great content creator and him and I have collabed in the past. And he's uh, reviewing Ultimatum the show. You don't need to know the context of the show. I just want to list. I have you guys listen to him in contrast to the group we just listened to. I want you to listen to him talk about um polyamorous people and relationships in general and jealousy just listen to how she talks about it and remember this is a show on television or on netflix right these are kind of abnormal normal people like normal people wouldn't be on a tv show but these are going to be people that normal people can consume and none of these people are talking about having open relationships or having um a one-sided relationship or all men cheat none of these people are like all men cheat That is such a weird fresh and fit bubble. That is such a weird menosphere bubble on the internet where they're like, oh, men cheat. Like, what are we talking about here? Okay. Lots of men cheat. Lots of women cheat. Lots of people are trash. We get it. Lots of people are dysfunctional. Not everyone needs to be that way, but you've got to first admit like you're dysfunctional, which in some ways she did, Xena. She admitted that she might not be healthy, but it's who she is, which is fair. 
but pay attention to the self-report. Okay, let's watch Dr. Kirk just to get the different vibe of another way you can be in the world. This is another way you can actually exist in the world. Okay, so to catch you up, they all had a speed dating experience and there were a lot of connections. It's always interesting to see that because they connect over some pretty, what I would say, superficial things. Now, their dates with each other, where they're mingling by the pool and that sort of thing, is a lot longer than the edit that we're seeing, so who knows. But also, it seems, based on previous iterations of The Ultimatum, it seems like for a lot of them, they're, th you know, just think about the situation. You are now dating, because you know, there's four available people, right? because your spouse is not available to you because you're now exes. So you have four people and you are in competition with four pe with three other people for four people, right? With three people or four people? <laughs> yeah, with three people. So you have to zero in on someone pretty quickly. And as soon as there's even a sign that you're connecting, you would have this motivation to kind of amp it up because <laughs> By the end of today, or, well, I guess they have a week, but I think it would, you know, you would imagine that some early connections would be, particularly because if other people have early connections early on, then that's one less person. Sorry, I just want to make sure it's not confusing anyone. So Ultimatum is basically a show where couples come in and one person in the unit gave the other person an ultimatum. So one person in the unit said, hey, like you either marry me or we break up. Then they go on this TV show where for the first week, all the couples are mingling and everyone's trying to get to know each other. And at the end of the first week, they basically choose somebody else to fake marry for three weeks. Then after they're done with their trial marriage, they switch to their original partners, right? So again, this is a show on television. And this is a therapist called Dr. Kirk Honda. Him and I have collabed in the past, Psychology in Seattle. And he reviews the TV shows and I love his work. I really like his, but he's another way to view relationships and to talk about jealousy and polyamory. And I just want you to listen to how he does it in contrast to what we just watched with the panel. And that is available to you. So as soon as you have someone that's even close to the mark, you, you know, you, you, you want to win that person over. And then also, if you're unsure about someone, but they seem to be really into you, you could think, well, what's the guarantee that I can find someone else that I want more than this person when I'm kind of discombobulated anyway, and none of those other people like me. So I'll go with this person. Yes, I'm really into you. You know, who knows? But we saw that, and now they are having an evening together, drinking, and they are uh, having a conversation seemingly prompted by the cast members of, okay, who'd you connect with? Who'd you connect with? And it reminded me of polyamorous conversations that will happen. And uh, when they have those conversations in the polyamorous community, they still suffer from jealousy and hurt feelings, but they can be heavily mitigated by a lot of philosophy and a lot of reassurance and a a lot of philosophy and a lot of reassurance. Just because you're poly doesn't mean jealousy goes away. Just because you're open and introspective doesn't mean you don't have feelings. But the ability to even have the conversation and to be honest about it is kind of what's key here. It's kind of what's key. It's saying we're aiming for something healthy. That's what's key. A lot of practices and a lot of systems in place. Like one of the things that uh, healthy polyamorous people will do healthy. is... If, say, for example, there's a, a, a couple, a primary, and they're polyamorous and you're polyamorous. And okay, sorry. So this is great language, right? This is why I say read the ethical slut, read more than two, read books that give you this language. So like when he says primary couple, so in polyamory or even in like Darius and Zena's relationship, they could be the primaries. And then they could have other people they see casually romantically or casually not romantically or very open, just sex. Like you can learn this language and use it in your relationship to give people an understanding of what their title is. If you want, you don't have to. This is poly language though. So this is an open language. Usually in open language, you would say, this is my anchor partner or this is my anchor partner, the partner I live with, the partner I'm building a life with. And these are my secondary partners or these are my lovers or these are my fuck buddies, whatever is more comfortable for you. Um... But, you know, this is this this language really helped me when I was coming up. Like it, it really helped me 
again, I love different language. I love categorization. I love words. I love options. I want as many options as I can get in life. And learning this language can really help. You meet up with one of the people at a party and the primary, so uh, let's just say it's me. <laughs> I'm not polyamorous, but, you know, and God bless polyamorous people, but I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I have figured out through uh, my life that I'm, po I'm monogamous oriented. And, but, you know, it's the same me. So, so let's say that I, there's another couple and there's a woman and I and her are maybe connecting, but the responsible polyamorous person will keep an eye on her primary. And if he starts to look upset or something to talk about it, oh, I think your partner might, might be a little upset. I, I might even go over to him and say like, so are, are we going beyond the threshold? You know, do you want to take a break for, you know, because I can back off. You know, those are the kind of conversations that will happen within polyamorous community. Or the other guy will come over to us talking and say, you know, originally I thought I'd be okay with this, but I'm not. So can we uh, separate here for a second? And me and her would say, oh yeah, totally, you know, uh, l let's do that. Um, also, there's a lot of communication. Sorry, this might be really confusing for people, but literally some of my best moments in poly or queer or open circles was how open everyone was to just hanging out and getting to know each other. So I always had a rule that I didn't care, like when I was poly, I'm monogamous now, but when I was poly, um, I always had a rule with my partners, like, I don't mind who you're with, but if you're dating somebody, I obviously want to get along with them. So please introduce me. I want to make sure that they're not crazy and you're not falling for some loser. And then if you're, you have a lover, I don't really have to n like them. I just, I just need to know like who they are and if you're safe, but like, you know, sometimes when you're dysfunctional, you have sex with people that aren't the greatest. Who cares? But if you're dating them, well, then I want some knowledge of who you're dating. Because at the time when I was poly, I was super open to having like a poly family and having a polycule and having like a bunch of people that were my people. And so again, different stages for different folks, different strokes for different folks, different stages of life though, really. Because now in my life now, um, I do monogamy and I think it's the most efficient for my life in so many ways. But that's also because my standard of dating is different as well. I don't want to date anyone that isn't like my one of those millions of perfect people for me. I think there are millions of perfect people for you in the world, not just one, but you got to meet the right people. The rest are nothing. The rest are not good for you. The rest are settling. The rest will bring you toxicity. But the one in a million or those one of the millions you meet, I know this is confusing. I think they're out there. Now, my partner and I have decided not to engage with those people. We've decided if we ever meet them just to like wave goodbye to the life that could have been. And to stay with each other and be monogamous with each other, I'm more than happy to do that. I have no reason to not need that. But some people might. Like, I'm more um, – I'm indifferent. Like, I'm not – I think I'm more monogamous-minded because of my desire to work all the time and my desire to just focus on one person. But I'm not, like, monogamous. Uh, like, uh, if I was poly, I could have made it work. If I was poly – if I was monogamous, I could have made it work. But in this relationship with this partner, monogamy makes a lot of sense. So, like, yeah, I'm happy to do it. I'm, like – not worried about it. But for some people, they're like, no, I need to be polyamorous. I need to be monogamous. Like, that's great too. do that. But Dr. Kirk is literally talking about a real phenomenon that happens where people meet each other and they're friendly. Like Xena is like, oh, I'll slap a bitch. I'll like, you know, she's being so mean to these potential women that might know Darius that that's the the irony of it all is that imagine a world where Xena could actually just meet these women and be fine with them and treat them like a person. Imagine a world where Zena could say, hey, girl, I know you're into him. I hope you guys understand, like, you know, friends or lovers only, not anything more. And then the girls would be like, oh, yeah, for sure. I respect boundaries. I remember when I was in a polyamorous relationship, um, the girl came up to me and said, hey, I hope it's okay. I want to sleep with your boyfriend. And I was like, for sure, get STI tested. Make sure you have condoms. Let's talk about boundaries. And we just made sure that we were good with each other. And then it was fine. And it was great. Like, it was wonderful. But if you don't have those tools, you won't know it's possible. And this just sounds so foreign to people. Like fresh and fit come from a bubble where like men and women can't be friends. Like I don't even know what that means. You know what I mean? Um, For the record, I did not burn the bridge with Destiny. Destiny burned the bridge with me. <laughs> um, Thank you, commenters. Like I appreciate the narrative that's going on the internet. But like I didn't burn the bridge. For the record, I don't need to burn the bridge. I'm fine having friends that are different from me. <laughs>
communication between the primaries of um, how are you doing, how did that feel last night, you know, and it's a process. The polyamorous couples are known for the amount of talking that they engage in. Um, the joke is, is that what's the difference between swingers and polyamorous people? You know, swingers have sex with people and polyamorous people talk about having sex with people. <laughs> ah? 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 Why does he know that? Why do I know that? Why doesn't Xena or the panel or any of the people asking um, Xena or Darius, do you want to be open or poly? Why don't they know the difference between swingers and open? They almost sound like they know the differences sometimes. But then they kind of sound like they're saying it's all the same thing. And that's what's crazy. Like these are different things. Swingers are interested in swapping partners, having sex, having a good time. Polyamorous people are interested in dating multiple people at the same time. Open poly is when you're open to dating multiple people at the same time and having lovers as well, which I did open poly when I was doing polyamory and I did hierarchical poly when I was doing poly. So I had a primary and then I had secondaries and thirds. And then I wanted multiple primaries. And now I do monogamy because that works better. And a monogamy that never involves myself with other people. So we're not monogamish. We're monogamous. Like I won't kiss somebody else, sleep with someone else. He won't kiss anyone else, sleep with anyone else. Like him and I are purely for each other. Nobody else. But we love our open relationship friends. I love my open relationship people. I have so many poly friends in my life who have amazing relationships with their people. And it always comes down to how much talking they do. Communication and actually following through on your words. <laughs> and, you know, that's not necessarily true. But the uh, stereotype is somewhat true that – to be polyamorous, you have to talk a lot. And typically, at least anecdotally, uh, in my experience, these people are pretty high-minded and sophisticated regarding emotions and jealousy and connection and attachment and needs and sexual. Because they have to be. Look, if you're in a polyamorous relationship, you can't just be like, I'm going to cut a bitch. I'm angry at her, blah, 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 like Xena was doing. You can't just be violent towards people because – you're like you're polyamorous what are you doing right like in a open relationship where she's letting her boyfriend have sex with other women like what are you doing Zena? but I get it because that's all they know right that's what they think per like loving someone is that's what they think possessive like possessing someone is that's what they think is healthy or not healthy sorry Zena actually corrected herself and said maybe it's not healthy that's what they think they have to do because they can't do anything else duality and acceptance of themselves and other people you know they're not necessarily advanced in those areas, but um, they've been exposed a lot more to those, idea, to mm -hmm. those ideas mm -hmm. and uh, uh, tend to do pretty well in those conversations on average. Of course, it's not always the case, but so it kind of had that feel as the 10 of them were like, who'd you connect with? It, as a, you know, in a polyamorous world, that would be a pretty normal conversation. Again, it, there might be some pain and some jealousy, of course. but I don't think any of these folks are polyamorous or right. uh, at least have been exposed to the philosophy. Exactly. And See, the philosophy. When you do red pill, that's a philosophy. That's a sense of self. That's a not like a, a version of knowing for the consciousness that you are. There is a literal, that's what I'm trying to sell you guys with my content. I'm saying you have so many options. You have so many options. The moment you tell yourself, well, that's just how the world is. Pause. The world isn't you. I'm asking you how you are. I'm asking you who you are, not the world. Uh, for looking at her name, Lisa and Brian. Brian was connecting with, I believe it was Raya, Raya and Ryan. And so uh, there was some discomfort for Lisa. I'll get the names in my head eventually. <laughs> and then she was upset and, and walking away from the group. I mean, she wasn't walking off in a huff or anything, but yes. she seemed to be... This episode gets crazy, this next episode. So this show is so funny. Here's Ultimatum. This girl literally signs up for it, puts her boyfriend in a position where she's like, hey, you're going to date somebody else, and then you're going to make a decision of whether or not you want to be with me or not. He ends up finding this other girl attractive, and then she gets so mad, she like physically assaults him and yells at this other girl, and I'm like, girl, get your shit under control. Like, it's so funny what people will put them through, put themselves through just to prove that they're in – a bad relationship or whatever. I don't know if they're still together because they ended up having a kid. I don't know. But that's okay. That's all I want to show you from that. Okay. 
I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool